Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Over the last decades, the U.S. Navy has been commissioning state-of-the-art seagoing defense technology. However, before these ships set sail, their reliability and seaworthiness must be evaluated thoroughly, starting with design testing in the Navy's vast indoor ocean facility. The Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin, or MSB, is a simulator designed to recreate ocean conditions to test and research the ship's behaviors. This large water tank allows researchers to observe how vessels maneuver and maintain stability in response to waves, wind, and currents. The U.S. Navy has one of the world's largest and most advanced maneuvering and seakeeping basins known as MASC. This facility is capable of mimicking any kind of wave, making it a real asset for guaranteeing overall operational efficacy. Here, vessels, submarines, and other seagoing vessels are tested from the early stages of design to completion. The massive wave pool measures 240 feet long, 360 feet wide, and 12 million gallons of water. The depth of this indoor ocean varies from 20 feet to 35 feet in some trenches with a 10.7 meter or 35 foot deep by 15.2 meter or 50 foot wide trench parallel to the long side of the basin on the south side. It was built back in 1962 at Carter Rock. The construction of MASC required extensive excavation and concrete works. Thousands of man hours and advanced construction techniques at that time to ensure structural integrity and water tightness. Until 2013, MASC used a pneumatic wave making system to test the scale model performance of ships. However, this initial technology had some limitations in creating complex wave patterns. To address these limitations, the facility underwent a major upgrade, replacing its original pneumatic wave maker system with 216 individually controlled electromechanical wave boards. This new finger-style technology gives the U.S. Navy unprecedented capability to create extreme, realistic ocean environments inside the facility. The upgraded model allows larger scale models, up to 30 feet in length, to be tested within the mask at Naval Surface Warfare Center Carter Rock. Established in 1898, Carter Rock has long supported the Navy in whole, mechanical and electrical engineering. Over 3,600 scientists, engineers, technicians, and support personnel bring their expertise in ship design, hydrodynamics, and materials science to conduct extensive testing on physical prototypes of ships to ensure integrity. In this facility, engineers test how ship scale models behave in the ocean. Unlike other basins, this tank can generate waves from multiple directions to replicate any wave pattern. The waves are produced in this basin by paddle mechanisms. There are 216 paddles that extend along one long end of the rectangle and short end of the rectangle. These 216 paddles are computer controlled 
and work in unison with each other to produce the wave pattern that we're interested in. And like your fingerprint, there are different wave patterns around the world. Through satellite and buoy data, we've been able to collect the wave energy spectrums of the oceans around the world and can replicate it here. So that when we test our scale models in this wave tank, we're actually mimicking the actual sea state conditions that a full scale ship would experience. Another important division of Carterac is the Unmanned Aerial Systems, or UAS, laboratory. This facility focuses on developing, testing, and evaluating unmanned aerial systems for the Maritime Mobility Mission. Researchers at the UAS laboratory work on improving flight endurance, payload capacity, and autonomous navigation systems. Currently, the UAS scale models developed within the laboratory are also tested in the MASC to ensure safe launch and recovery on ships. Engineers utilize motion capture technology to investigate swarming capabilities, teaming behaviors, water surfacing, submerging, and underwater operations. In 2019, researchers at the Model Basin conducted a remarkable laser beaming demonstration, showcasing the potential of power beaming technology. This demonstration set hundreds of watts of power over hundreds of meters. By shining a laser onto a photovoltaic receiver, energy was transmitted without physical infrastructure. This innovation enables ground-to-air recharging of electric platforms, such as drones, allowing them to stay airborne indefinitely. The demonstration proved the system's safety and effectiveness, with the beam being invisible and silent, delivering over 400 watts of DC power. This breakthrough opens up exciting possibilities for untethered energy transfer and creative force protection. Laser weapons also play a crucial role in deterring hostiles. Recently, the amphibious transport dock ship USS Portland demonstrated laser technology's capability by successfully disabling an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV, using the Solid State Laser Technology Maturation Laser Weapon System Demonstrator, or LWSD. There are many other experimental weapons in the U.S. Navy. Scientists and researchers continuously develop advanced technologies and weapon systems to enhance combat capabilities and defense mechanisms and maintain superiority over adversaries. These new weapons are developed, tested, and evaluated within the Naval Surface Warfare Center Dahlgren Division. Home to over 4,700 scientists, engineers, and support personnel, this facility is dedicated to providing innovative solutions for naval warfare, particularly in the areas of surface combat systems, weapon systems, and ordnance. Applications developed here are subject to meticulous testing to ensure their reliability before deployment. Among various innovations, we find the electromagnetic railgun. This weapon is designed as a linear motor device and uses electromagnetic force to launch high-velocity projectiles.
During testing, the Office of Naval Research showcased the weapon's initial rep rate fires of multi-shot salvos. The electromagnetic railgun relies on massive electrical masses instead of gunpowder or other chemical propellants to fire projectiles at an insane speed, exceeding Mach 6 and over 100 nautical miles. This allows for shorter engagement time, extended keep, and longer range than conventional guns. Electromagnetic warfare is also the mission area of the Naval Surface Warfare Center, Crane Division, or NSWC Crane. Located in Crane, Indiana, this center is a shore command of the U.S. Navy, operating under the Naval Sea Systems Command. It is a high-tech powerhouse, delivering cutting-edge solutions to warfighters throughout the entire life cycle. This division has three main focuses. In addition to electromagnetic warfare, it concentrates its efforts on enhancing expeditionary warfare and strategic mission areas. Here, the world's prominent engineers conduct science and technology, research development, test and evaluation, acquisition, and in-service engineering to support the fighting men and women. NSWC Crane is known for its national technical leadership and warfighter connectedness. In strategic missions, the NSWC Crane excels in providing specialized capabilities in missile defense and global strike capability. Scientists, engineers, and technicians work together to provide the warfighter with efficient applications to enable them to detect threats, defend, and defeat with high precision. In the electromagnetic field, the laboratory boasts the DOD's largest concentration of multispectral, multi-domain, air, land, sea, EW expertise. The NSWC Crane leverages the latest technology creatively to enhance its electronic warfare. For instance, AI and machine learning are used to detect radio frequency or RF spectrum to detect any radio frequency. On the other hand, the Expeditionary Warfare Center concentrates on supporting warriors with solutions essential for successful and safe mission accomplishment. These include sensors and communications, mobility and maneuverability, and special munitions and weapons. Another Naval Surface Warfare Center facility is the High Energy Test Facility. This center was established to conduct comprehensive testing of high-energy density batteries. Experts work here to extend battery performance and identify worst-case scenarios to protect fighters from potential casualties that batteries might cause, especially since batteries are everywhere. Therefore, any battery must pass the Navy's Lithium Battery Certification Program to guarantee its safety and reliability for deployment, storage, and transportation. In this facility, both non-abusive and abusive tests are conducted in line with the Navy Lithium Battery Platform Integration Safety Manual, which includes performance, high voltage, and environmental testing. One notable solution developed by NSWC Crane is the all-virtual maintenance training system known as the Slick 32 system. The Slick 32 provides ships with early detection, signal analysis, threat warning, and protection from anti-ship missiles. The virtual training system created with the Naval Air Warfare Center Training Systems Division allows sailors to practice maintenance while at sea without engaging with actual materials. This system features a high-fidelity 3D gaming environment displayed on 4K screens, giving users a realistic and effective learning experience. 
Unlike physical systems, the virtual version is cost-effective as it overcomes logistical constraints and avoids risks related to physical contact. Amidst the dynamic geopolitical landscape, advancements developed within the U.S. Naval Surface Warfare Centers reinforce America's leadership in maritime defense capabilities. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.